Right, so I'm gonna go over some quick techniques here to help with optimization. You hear a lot of people talking about optimization recently within the VR chat space and the creator community specifically. Um, and I've heard a lot of uh, issues people have with optimization. And I feel like a lot of that stems from the concept of not knowing what you don't know. It's very difficult to know how to optimize without knowing what optimization is um, in essence. And I think it's very important to kind of understand what makes a model optimized and what doesn't. In this particular circumstance, I have these two meshes here. This is two materials total. This is one material here for the clothes. This is one for the, for the details. Now, the issue with this is I have these two materials, but they're very densely packed in the UV. Um, and that makes 2K textures look bad um, for these specifically, uh, these materials specifically. And 4K textures look too good. Like the, the detail I can get is currently 4K. It, it's way too good. You don't need to see this much detail when you're in a game. Uh, you, just, you just really don't. So what I want to do is find a nice happy medium so I don't have to use 4K on each of these materials. I'm okay using 4K for both of them combined because there's a lot of surface area here and I really do like my detail. So if, uh, if you want to get mad at me for using 4K, I, I would recommend taking a walk. So anyway, with that passive aggressive comment out of the way, um, to get this set up, we need to open up the shader editor and you want to set up all of your materials. So for this clothes uh, material, I have you know, I have these, these uh, textures here. So I've set up my PVR textures for a lot of people. People only use uh, base color. That's fine. For me, I have a whole PVR workflow that I use. So you can go ahead and plug those in here. Um, same with your other or however many meshes you have. It doesn't matter. You can combine them all to one material if you want. It's easy. Um, so I set up my material for this as well. So now that I have those two materials set up, I can go ahead and join these meshes together because I will be combining both of these materials into one material. And it's important to note that I will be using an add-on here today. It's a $16 add-on. It's called Simple Bake. It's worth every single penny you'll spend on it um, for the amount of time savings. I'm not even going to go over uh, how to bake multiple texture sets to one texture using Blender's default baker um, because it would probably take me a good two hours to bake all of this quick, uh, all of this down, right? So I'm gonna go over it using that add-on. Um, so basically what we wanna do is we want to create a new UV map. You can just go to the object data properties and then go to UV maps and add a new UV map. I'm gonna call it Atlas. So now what we can do is we can drag over our window and select the UV editor. We can hit tab and forgive me, I have a shape key selected. Um, I can select everything here with A, and you'll see it's all selected in the UV editor. Now, it's important to note when you're doing this, make sure you have your second UV selected, not your first one. So now what we can do is we can just hit F3 and type in average island scale. Um, sometimes you don't want to average the island scale. Sometimes you want more detail in certain places and you want less detail in others. That is okay. At this point, if you want, you can manually UV all of this and get it all neat and tidy. Um, but we're not gonna do that for sake of time. I'm just gonna hit F3 again and do pack islands. Just type in pack UV, pack islands. And now we have a pack UV. Um, these are way too close together. You're gonna get a lot of mitmapping mapping issues here. Um, so what we're gonna do is we're gonna go to the bottom left under pack islands and we're gonna drag this slider over until we see it. That's, uh, it's a little laggy. So we're gonna drag it to the left until we get a textile density per island that we like. Textile density just means the amount of pixels per island. If you wanted to, if you wanted to get into specifics, there, there's, oh, it's a lot of it. It's a deeper topic than that, but we're just going to call it that for sake of understanding. Um, so this is okay. It's not a great UV, um, but we can keep it. Uh, for me personally, I'm going to be. I'm just going to use another add-on called UV Pack Master. It's forty-five dollars. It's a little bit more expensive, but it's going to save you a lot of time and it's going to help you optimize way more. So you could run with this UV, no problem. Um, this is going to get the job done. But again, I like to use this add-on because as you can see, the pack you get is absolutely phenomenal. This is just absolutely incredible. Uh, you'll have hardly any mapping issues, if any at all. And it's all very nicely packed. And you'll get really, really good textile density per, per island throughout. And you're going to have nice uh, optimized textures with this. So now that we have our UV uh, we're going to go into Simple Bake and bake our, our stuff down here so we can drag this away. We don't need it. 
Uh, now we can select our, our model. We keep the material separate, that is okay, but we select our model here, and then we go to the, the, uh, the render properties here. We can scroll down to Simple Bake. And now what we can do is you'll have all of these hidden. So what we can do here is we can select bake objects, we can open it up, click on your, your Atlas uh, mesh, hit add, and then scroll down. Do not check bake selected objects to target and do not check isolate objects. And we wanna open up the PBR bake section and you wanna check diffuse. And if you use PBR shading, you're gonna to wanna to check roughness and glossy, normal emission strength, or rather you don't need this one, forgive me, uh, emission strength and metalness. So you can bake all of these. Uh, again, if you're not using a PBR workflow and you're just using uh, diffuse, then just select diffuse, or if you're using diffuse and normal, select those two, whatever you need to select here, go ahead and do it. So now what we can do is we can go to the texture settings and for sake of example, I'm gonna bake it 2K to save myself some time um, and make sure clear existing bake image before bake is on. And all of these other settings are totally fine as they are. So now we want to go to the export settings here. We want to select a path to export to. So I'm going to just go to somewhere completely random here and it doesn't matter. Um, I'm going to call this tutorial bakes and I can select that folder. And now we have a folder where we're going to be exporting our bakes to. So what we want to do now, I did forget a step here. We need to make sure our model is selected. We need to go to the object data properties again and make sure you have Atlas or your second UV, third UV, however many UVs you have, you have this selected. Whichever one you wanna to bake to, it needs to be selected and whichever one you wanna bake from needs to be uh, render in, in the render view. So now we can go back to our render settings, scroll all the way down, make sure all your settings are the same. You can go ahead and take a screenshot, pause the video if you want. Um, this is what you need, at least for, for my purposes. Um, probably in your case, you wanna bake at 4K and then downscale it in Unity for best results and best optimization, but I'm gonna bake a 2K to save some time. So now I can scroll down. I just do foreground bake. Um, I don't really mess with background bake. I don't really need to, but uh, anyway, we could just hit bake and it's gonna go ahead and do that. I'll be right back. All right, now our textures are all baked and we can see the result. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna shift D to duplicate this so I can see the result on a separate mesh in case there were any mistakes. And I'm going to go ahead and remove all the materials and I'm going to add a new one, call it Atlas. And then what we can do is we can drag this over, open up our shader editor. And now you want to find all of the images that you baked to this folder and drag them in and set them up in the principled shader. So to do that, um, I'm just going to go ahead and add an image texture and we can instantly see the result here. I can hit open. And I can find the image texture. So in this case, I called it uh, close bake PBR. It's gonna it's gonna be called that. So I can double click that and drag that into the base color slot. Um, and then you can see it looks awful and it doesn't match, match up at all. That's because I do not have a UV specified in here. So I can hit Shift A, search UV map, select this UV map, and then I have this little picker here. I can select this and hit Atlas and then take this UV and drag it into the vector slot. So now you can see we have our baked material. This is 2K, not 4K, and you can see it still looks great. This is probably acceptable for VR chat standards um, because you're not gonna see um, a lot of this detail up close. Now for me personally, it's not okay, um, mainly because of the way that I've set up the UVs originally from the get-go, mainly here. Um, this looks absolutely awful, but that's because I'm bad at UV mapping. Whoops. Um, also this here, this does not look good. Um, so I'm going to be going ahead and probably redoing this um, on my own time, either redoing the UV or just using a 4K texture. Um, but that's pretty much it. I'm going to go ahead and set up the rest of the materials just so you can kind of get an idea of what it may look like um, for yourself. So I'm going to add the metallic map drag that into metallic slot. I'm going to add the roughness map. By the way, how I was doing that is I click on this and I hit shift D to duplicate it. But uh, anyway, I'm going to click on this, make sure I click my roughness map, drag that into roughness, click this, make sure this is the emission map. 
Um, this is kind of something you can do on your own time. This is very simple, just setting up the principled shader. Um, and now we can set up our normal map. Our normal map is a little bit different. So we need to open up our normals and you need to add shows shift A. Sorry, I'm very fast. I move fast. Um, you shift A and you type in normal, you hit normal map. And you drag this into the color and drag normal into normal. Now it's very important to note that color space on your normal map needs to be non-color. Color space on your metallic and roughness maps also needs to be non-color. And now I just need to make sure that the other UV map is lined up to all of these vectors. And now it should look nice and pretty in our view here at 2K resolution. Um, really liking the results. So essentially, um, obviously that was a very fast tutorial. This is uh, this tutorial specifically is geared more towards uh, those who already know kind of what you're doing um, and those who have experience in doing this stuff. Um, I'll be making a slower tutorial explaining a lot more uh, at a later date. But for now, uh, I recommend watching it at like not 0.25 speed or whatever, and uh, just kind of pause, take notes, however you want to do it. Uh, but anyway, uh, this has been a little tutorial on optimization. Uh, hopefully this has helped. Um, again, this has taken me from having to use two 4K entire texture sets to a single 4K texture set, or even 2K if I wanted, just because this actually looks really solid. Um, but uh, yeah, those choices are up to you, and uh, that's about it.